Hi, I'm Willie and welcome back to my channel. Thank you to everyone for being here. This is week two of network theory <clears throat> and uh, we are going to really start getting, you know, in depth. I'm going to cover like one thing a week. This could go on for a long time and I hope that you're here to watch it. Um, I am going to try to start posting more and more videos, keep those live streams uh, coming at regular intervals. So if you're watching this tonight, there may be a live stream in the morning while I'm drinking coffee because I don't have anything planned for the morning um, besides just kind of chillaxing with my family. Oh, and actually I am going to record uh, a video on this guy, which is the Tap Lock 1, and I'll be recording a video on the Noki Bluetooth Smart Padlock. And then uh, you know, probably finishing up some paperwork, logistics. I got things to do for my day job, so that'll be coming. And then don't forget, uh, at these next three uh, 1,000 subscriber uh, marks, I've got these net tools to give away. So, and then I don't know if you can see what's on my... See that back there? Top of the... Uh, Synology? Yeah, we'll be talking about that pretty soon, too. So, welcome to week two of Network Theory. And uh, let's hop into this here. So, last week we covered what a network was. This week we are going to talk about types of networks. But, like I said, you know, we're going to break this down. Here you can see... Um, I've got LAN, bold, underline, italicized. That probably means we're going to concentrate on LAN for the next five minutes because I think that should kind of sum it up. You don't want to hear me ramble too much. But the types of networks that exist, LAN, local area network, MAN, uh, metropolitan area network, WAN, wide area network, WLAN, wireless local area network, CAN, controller area network, PAN, personal area network, the list goes on and on and on. SAN is not even on here. Storage area network. These are all things that we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about these types of networks, what they are, um, and how you can use them and things like that. And, you know, there there's so much to this that I doubt that I will actually cover it all because I'm trying to keep these short and concise. But uh, it will at least hopefully give you enough of a spark that you're going to you know, go out and do some other research. So tonight, let's talk about the LAN or the local area network. Now, a local area network is usually in a smaller geographical area, maybe a building or maybe a large warehouse. So even a store like the size of a Target or a Walmart, I would consider that everything in that building a local area network because it's in the same building. So um, then you start looking at like campus area networks. So you've got multiple buildings that are then connected. You know, you, you could talk about campus area networks that way. But LAN, when I'm talking about it, we're talking about uh, same building, same geographic area. But now I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, LAN, if you take two PCs and you plug an Ethernet cable in between them and you configure IP addresses on them or... Um, I don't know if it'll work if you let the uh, APIPA address um, configure, but um, if you just take a, co a cable and plug it between two PCs and you put static IPs on them, I know for a fact you'll be able to communicate. And guess what you've just done? You have two devices communicating. You've created a network. So a LAN could get as small as two PCs. Um, or it could be 200 or 2,000 PCs. It could be hundreds of PCs, all in this smaller geographic area. And when I'm talking about it, let's talk about a building. So like this is a, an office building, a house, something like that. A wireless um, local area network also plays into this because you can see that I've got Cat5, Cat6, and Fiber, but this can also also be wireless, but we will specifically talk about WLANs in another video. So Cat5 and Cat6 cabling, Cat7 I'm starting to see is becoming popular. Uh, I've run into some folks that have actually emailed me because they're having problems with power over Ethernet, and every time we've had an issue lately, it's because somebody's using Cat7 cable. 
I don't know anything about the CAT 7 uh, standard. If it's even been ratified, I don't know. Uh, so CAT 5 and CAT 6, that's where my wheelhouse is at, fiber and, of course, wireless. Um, but CAT 5, CAT 6, it's going to be copper. You know, it's going to be, and you've got uh, shielded and unshielded. So if it's shielded, it's got some sort of a wrapper around it or a shield around it that protects from electromagnetic interference. Um, a lot of times uh, when you're running Cat5, Cat6 in the building, it won't necessarily be shielded unless you have an environment that has a lot of interference. Then you may see the shielding. The most, most of the time when we use a shielded cable, it's because we are running from outside to inside or a complete outside run, things like that. Um, so your local area network is probably going to have switches. If it's using hubs, call me. We'll take care of that. Uh, but you're probably going to be connected to a switch. So that's kind of the geographical layout, the cabling that you're going to see. So fiber is becoming more and more popular, um, even in the local area network, kind of in the D.C. more so, but I've heard of people running it to their desktops um, as of late, so I can't ignore that anymore. can see this is what uh, Cat5, Cat6 Ethernet cables look like. And there is a familiar site that is a Ubiquiti Networks UAP AC Pro. So let's talk about the topologies and the speeds that are available. So two of the most common topologies that you're going to see, and there are others besides this, but the two most common that you're going to see in 2017, or I hope, I say this, um, but I, as soon as I say this, I know there's going to be somebody still running a token ring network, and they're going to speak up, and they're going to say, I'm still running token ring at 14 megabits per second. And I'm going to be like, awesome. But in, when we build new networks, we're not doing that. We're not running an old bus topology anymore. Uh, you're going to see a mesh or a star. And when you think about the star network, think about uh, spoken hub. So your switch is in the middle, and then it goes out to... Um, each of your of your workstations um, and then mesh is going to so here's your here's your hub and each one of these ports is going to go out to a printer uh, an access point a server a workstation that's where you get the star the spoken hub and then mesh is going to be um, a network that has multiple connections to uh, multiple multiple connections to the devices so that it is fully meshed so that there is no one single point of failure. And uh, some of the speeds that that we're dealing with, 10 megabits per second, which um, I haven't seen a 10 megabit besides a video I did where we purposefully degraded the speed of the Ethernet connection kind of as a rate limiter cheater instead of doing quality of service. Uh, 100 megabit still does exist. A lot of your lower end devices um, that are not expensive still have 100 megabit ports. So that Tenda router that I have, I believe that only has 100 megabit ports. Um, then probably the most common that you're seeing right now, as far as copper goes, is uh, 1 gigabit. Recently, the 2.5 and the 5 gigabit standard uh, has come about. I haven't I haven't uh, deployed any of that yet. I don't know anybody who has. 10 gigabit, you can get that in copper. The Ubiquiti solutions support that and have copper 10 gig ports. But then there's also 40 gig and 100 gig. And most of the time where I'm seeing 40 gig and 100 gig is in the data center. Or even if it's in a small office, uh, you're seeing the, uh, the 40 gig and the 100 gig in you know server and storage deployments and things like that. Or it's a backbone. Um, between two data centers, things like that. So what can you put on a local area network? Anything you want. So it can be just those two PCs together, which is going to be pretty boring unless you're just, you know, uh, playing Doom or, uh, you know, games or you're just, um, you know, accessing files, you know, one, excuse me, one off of the other. Uh, so things that can be on... Your local area network. Now, this can also extend to other types of network topologies, but 
in your small office or your building or whatever your local area network uh, size is, you probably see printers. You see, you know, servers that host applications, email servers, payroll servers, uh, SQL servers, and I'm mixing actual service types with actual servers, but uh, web servers, um, remote access servers, Unify servers, uh, phone servers, all these different applications, file servers. And uh, a lot of time then your local area network also provides the gateway to get out to the internet or to get to other networks. And the internet is the largest wide area network that exists. Um, and so we'll get into that later. And most of the time in 2017, the protocol that you're going to see that's driving your network is going to be TCP IP and you're going to be using IP version 4 or IP version 6. And in our networking theory, we are going to get into both IP version 4 and IP version 6. It is important that you are versed in both of these. IP version 6 kind of has, you know, some slow adoption in the states. Uh, IP version 4 you can still get IP version 4 addresses. Just because they have been depleted doesn't mean that they don't exist. It means that they have all been spoken for. So you have, you know, these uh, companies that buy these networks and then they can turn around and resell those IP addresses. I am actually in the midst of inv investigating buying my own Class C. So if you happen to be in that business, reach out to me, please. But then IP version 6 um, addresses some of the, the shortcomings of IP version 4. We will get into that more and more later down the road. There are some other protocols that you, you may see, um, but they probably shouldn't be in use. Mostly you're going to see you know uh, the, the communication happening in TCP IP, IP version 4. So next week we will cover wide area network so and what I'd like you to do is if you look at the format of this video and there are things that you think I should have covered but I didn't and you want to see those covered in wide area network please let me know down in the comments if you like this video please give me a thumbs up please follow me on Twitter and Instagram please use my Amazon affiliate links to keep a few bucks rolling in the channel and please subscribe please comment and share and we'll see you in the next video